Howdy folks, it's your friend Dominic. Ever since I was younger, I've always wanted to have my own fishing show. So here it is. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about three of some of my favorite baits when targeting pre-spawn largemouth bass. Stay tuned, got a lot of good stuff coming your way. I know you're going to like it. I hope everybody's been doing well. I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded a video recently, and I'll be sure to explain my reasons why in an up and coming video. I don't feel quite like explaining it right now. I'd rather talk about bass fishing. So I don't know about you, but springtime is one of my favorite times of the year. I enjoy the fall. I enjoy the summer. I like the winter, but there's something special about spring. The weather's getting warmer. The flowers are in bloom, flowers are pretty, and the bass are biting. Round the clock, largemouth, smallmouth bass. Today we're going to be talking about largemouth in particular because this is the time of year where you can have some of the best days of the season. And if you're lucky, maybe even one of the best days of your life. Another thing I like about fishing this time of year when it comes to largemouth bass Fish feed around the clock. It seems like as soon as the sun comes up and right as it's going down, those fish are feeding. They don't care where the sun is positioned in the sky. They don't really care how bright it is. You put the right bait in front of them, they're going to eat. And I'm going to share with you three of my favorite baits that I use this time of year. Now, in particular, we're talking about pre-spawn water. And comfortably speaking... Uh, 45 degrees up until the low to mid 60s you go any higher than that that's when the largemouth start getting on beds and then you know fishing for them becomes a totally different game and that's going to be a content for another future video the name of the game when it comes to fishing pre-spawn largemouth bass is covering water and covering as much of it as possible like i said earlier these fish feed are on the clock you got to be on the move whether you're fishing from shore hit a couple of shore spots if you're on the boat you know keep that motor going put those baits in as many different places as you can and you will find the fish you're going to want to be looking for shallow flats and by shallow i mean 10 foot of water and under look for healthy grass and cover such as tree limbs, stumps, rocks, ledges, especially if you find yourself in an area where, where you're seeing all of these signs, money spot. Be sure you check them out and do what you can to put a bait in front of a bass because like I said, this is the time of year where you might have the best day of the season, maybe even of your life, who knows? So without further ado, let's talk about the first bait we got going on. One of my favorite baits when it comes to springtime largemouth, square bills. Cool thing is with the square bill, especially ones that rattle, they call in the hungry bass. They've got a nice wide swimming action. We've got the Berkeley Pitbull right here. I've got the Booyah XCS. This was modeled after the Excalibur. This is a fantastic square bill especially around timber and RIP to one of the true legends. This is the Rapala Clack and Crank. They don't make it anymore. If you ever see them, do yourself a favor and buy as many as you can. I love fishing the square bills because you know, the bass, the, the bass love them too. You know, who, who, who can argue with what the bass have to say? Am I right? They, they not only work around cover, but if you just want to chuck them out in open water, Hey, they've got a nice swimming action that resembles a fish and a bite-sized fish, nonetheless, that these bass want to put in their bellies to stock up before they get on the spawn. Big key with the square bills, make sure they have rattles. Can be an honest game changer. I swear by it. Me, I'm a big rattle guy. I like, th I like, th I like throwing square bills to have rattles. They do the job for me and they work in a lot of different places. So if you're a pro at square bill fishing, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. If you're new to square bill fishing, do yourself a favor, tie one on, fish it around stuff. They deflect really well off of whatever it is you're fishing around. You're go it, it's, it's crankbait fishing. You're going to lose a few, but when 
that bait deflects off of a, a rock or a stump or whatever, that's what triggers the big ones to bite. And like I said, make sure you get one with a rattle. That sometimes alone can make the world of a difference. The next bait I'm gonna share with you, been around for a while, but I've only been fishing with them for a couple of years now. And that is the Chatterbait, otherwise known as a bladed jig. I have an original Chatterbait from Z-Man right here. Uh, I couldn't tell you the brand of this one. I won it on a contest on the internet. Um, but I've caught fish with it. I like it a lot. And then these other ones I've been fishing with quite a bit. These are the Booyah Melee uh, bladed jigs. I believe chatterbait is a licensed term by Z-Man, but it's also a catch-all term. You know what I'm saying. Bladed jigs, chatterbaits, they work very well. And when you're fishing for largemouth bass in situations like I mentioned beforehand, you're fishing around a lot of grass. These fish very well through grass and they offer uh, an irresistible vibration and shaking action that I can't really explain when it's going through the water. It looks like just your regular typical bass jig. It's got a nice stout thick gauged hook but it's got this small metal plate on the eyelet of it and when you make that cast and you retrieve it back you can count it down to the depth roughly where you want to bring it back at and it just kind of shudders along. And it, it looks a little different, but if you're into power fishing and you you have a knack for feeling how your bait is swimming along through the water, some some people just pick up the chatterbait and, and they're a natural at it. So there's a lot of debate whether or not you need a shiny blade like these ones right here. Sometimes they're gold, sometimes they're silver, sometimes they're dark. You know, a lot of people say, you know, you don't see bluegill or bait fish too often with real shiny heads. So they believe that the darker toned blades are more natural appealing. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I know they all work, but this time of year, pre-spawn, largemouth bass are looking to eat. They'll fall victim to these, especially I've personally found on days where it might be a little challenging. Maybe you don't have as much wind as normal maybe it's a little bit more calm maybe it's a little bit extra sunny on certain days the chatterbait outperforms any of these other baits i'm sharing with you today just because you know that's that's how the cookie crumbles obviously the erratic action you know ripping it through weeds coming around structure that's what triggers the bites i like chatterbait fishing these are ones i've personally used I haven't used too many different ones. And as far as trailers go, I like fishing with different swim baits on them. Right here, we have a Kitek 3.8 inch swing impact fat minnow. And then this is just a Lost Creek 3.8 swim bait. You can pick these up at Sportsman's Warehouse, I believe. It's got a nice bluegill color to it. This has been one of my more successful baits over the over the last couple of years. That style of swim bait, something nice and skinny, something that comes to the grass really good. You can also feel free to use a just a regular twister tail, like a Fat Albert Grub by Zoom. These will work really, really good. Something subtle, something that'll swim through the water. Or if you're feeling really frisky and you want to fish something a little bit taller, right here we have the Mr. Twister 4-inch Sassy Shad. Something nice and flat, something that'll go through the cover really well. Chatterbaits, if you haven't fished with them, do yourself a favor. Pick one up and go for it. You know, it's, it's as simple as keeping that bait as straight as possible, working it on there, and giving it a go. All right, now that looks that looks pretty tasty because that jig is gonna have this, that blade is going to have this jig shutter just the right way and that tail's going to be kicking and doing its thing and you're gonna have a bass on the end of your line before you know it. So pick a trailer that you like first and foremost, it's up to you. Some people don't like fishing with trailers. Some people, you know, don't fish chatterbaits unless they have a trailer. Me, I like putting trailers on them, but that's up to you. And I saved arguably one of my all-time favorite baits for last. If you know me, no big surprise, 
Lipless cranks, I absolutely love them. I don't leave I don't I don't leave home unless I have a bunch of these with me. Lipless crankbaits are so versatile, and this time of year you could fish them in a number of different places and get blown up. You can count them down and fish them on the deeper side. You can yo-yo them, you can jig them, you can rip them through grass, you can cast them at the shoreline, whatever it may be. There's something about these little swimming profiles with their rattles and their subtle actions that drive the fish up the wall. So, honorable mention, we have two right here. These are the Rapala Rattlin' Wraps right here. I've got the Booyah Hard Knocker. This has been a real good one for me over the years. The Berkeley War Pig's another good one. These are the only three I actually have on me right now because I've lost a couple already this season. Like I said, you know, that's crankbait fishing. You're going to lose some of these. Um, the Strike King Red Eye Shad, that's another fantastic lipless crankbait. The Bill Lewis Rattle Trap, the list goes on and on and on. You have to find a bait that works for you and something that you feel comfortable with. Me, I like the Booyah Hard Knocker a lot because it's got a real nice deep rattle to it. Very, very loud and the fish blow up on it. I like the Berkeley War Pig. It seems like when you give it a pause, it gives it just enough hang time for the fish to come up and swipe at it before it comes down in the weeds. And that's the same case with the Rattlin' Rapala right here. I've been fishing with these for about 10, 11 years or so, and I've, I've caught all species with them round the clock, but especially largemouth bass during this time of year. They're hungry. They want to put the feed bag on. You can cast these babies a country mile, work, work the points, cast at different angles and sooner or later you're going to get blown up by probably a very big springtime largemouth bass but it's no surprise lipless crankbaits made the list square bells good ones too and when things get a little tricky hey i like to throw the chatterbait or the bladed jig whatever you want to call it make sure you have a trailer of your choice if you want to have a trailer but these are all baits that I personally use this time of year between 45 degree water up until the low to mid 60s. And these are all moving baits. This time of year, the fish are active. I'm trying to make as many casts as I can. I'm doing a lot of power fishing. And what I use when I'm power fishing, this is my rod. This is a seven foot medium heavy Abu Garcia Veritas. I like this rod, very strong, helps me rip these baits through the cover. This is a 50 pound copolymer. It's technically the Berkeley fluoro shield. It's a copolymer that's coated in fluorocarbon. So it not only floats unlike a fluorocarbon, it's super clear unlike a copolymer. And yeah, copolymer is clear enough as it is, but when it's coated with the fluorocarbon, it refracts the light. So the fish won't be able to see it. This, you know, this line shines really brightly when you're fishing stop and go top waters, but that's the story for a different day. As, as you can See, I'm a man of my word. I've got a Booyah Melee jig on here. I like fishing with the 15 because, you know, I'm fishing relatively shallow, 10 foot of water and under. And, you know, I'm fishing around a lot of stuff. You know, sometimes I need to pull it through. Sometimes I need to get these fish out of certain areas. And they're not super overgrown like they are in the summertime. And I'm fishing it on a bait casting outfit. Just power fishing. It's a lot more comfortable for me. This is an Abu Garcia Revo S. It is geared in a 6.4 to 1 ratio. I'm making long casts. And I'm sometimes I'm burning it, these baits back to the boat. Sometimes... I'm doing more action with the rod, picking it up and dropping it and reeling up the slack. Go out there and find whatever works on that day. Generally speaking, the first couple hours or so you're on the water before you really start getting your bites and really getting it dialed in, play with your retrieves constantly. See what works. Remember how you caught your first and your last fish. This is my baby. I do a lot of casting with it. I got some pretty wicked tennis elbow not too long ago. but. I think we're going to wrap it up there, folks. I got to say, thank you very much for tuning in. Remember what I said, cast as much as you can, work it at different angles. Make sure you see about having a bait that has a rattle. Oftentimes that makes the world of a difference. So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please let me know. I would appreciate it very much. And until next time, have a good one.